Hello, my name's Robert Adams from Papercrafts Limited, and I'm here today to show you some more of our all occasion dies and use them within our craft making. So what I'd like to do to start off with is begin by obviously making some cards, talking about the dies as we go along. However, <laughs> what I am gonna do to start off with is not make a card. I want to do something a little bit different initially to start with, but show you how we use it. Now, if we have a look at this clock here, it's a little bit worse for wear, I'm afraid, um, but this is what I'd like to show you what we can make today. And making this, I've used a number of components, but I'll dive on into the dies first. I've used our all occasion uh, cog set here, and I've got a range of gu uh, gears or cogs, as you can see here, down to the side. And I'm gonna to talk to you about the the clock mechanism and everything else as we go along. So, where do we start? Well, I've, you can see, I've already cut a load of our cogs here. Different colors, and I'll talk about that in a mo. To make the clock itself is, is pretty easy. What we're gonna use is a, a standard CD or DVD. Um, can be an old one, it really doesn't matter. And I'm gonna work on the shiny side here, and that's what we're gonna glue onto. The mechanism is from my favorite shop online and they range from 99p upwards to a couple of pounds and they usually come with all the hands as well. Now that said we can um, adapt that and again I'll, I'll talk about this as we go along but you, this is the basic set that I've got here. Um, starting price 99p. So it's, it's not a lot of money to really make this card. Um, but it's something worth considering. I think they're, they're rather nice, a little bit special, and the cogs work particularly well with it. So, first of all, we have to decorate this. Now, I think it's probably not a bad idea to get the basic mechanism in place. And you can see here, I've got a little ridge which it sits on. And it conveniently, and this is what I love about this, I don't know if they're all gonna be like this, but it just kind of, I'll just show you that, kind of, Kind of just slots quite nicely into there and locks in. It was made for it. Then they, they may or may not come with a rubber washer and sometimes you can put that underneath um, and then bolt it on. It's up to you how, how you want it to look. I could do that at, th at this stage because it kind of locks in so nicely there. I'm just going to pop this on and then just simply tighten it up. This isn't card making as we normally do, is it? I'm just doing this finger tight, and there we go. I probably could do it being a wee bit tighter. And that's now gonna just basically pull this in. Each one that you may get might be slightly different, but that gives me my mechanism there and my clock mechanism on the back. And the hands will then fit on accordingly, hour, minute, and second on the top there. So that I'm going to just pop to one side, because I can't tell you how many times I've lost those hands. And look now at the decoration of it. Well, what as I said, what I've got here are my, now we've called them cogs, or in actual fact, they're gears. I'm not gonna go into the story how they got called cogs, um, but I'm gonna call them cogs. That's what they appear on on our website. It's the cog set there. Just before I start putting some cogs down onto the clock, I'd just like to show you again, here's our die. Here's my card, I've got a little bit of red mirror board, and pop it on, it's just business as usual. The only thing that's slightly different with these is that you'll notice lots of my dies, these will cut beautifully for you. Just run that through there. But what you will notice is that the release is perhaps a little bit more difficult than normal, because where the our dies normally just drop out on you. I'll just pull this away here. You can see our, our cogs there. Now a normal die, that would just be probably just popping out for you. Because we've got so many teeth, because it is so intricate, what you will find quite useful sometimes, I give it a tap onto something hard, which is usually my base plate. Give it a little bit of tap like that. Lots of the middle parts will just drop, drop out. And then that's it. It's a few taps like that. It's not gonna damage your die. What they're not gonna do is just come slithering out. You will need your pokey tool for these. The only reason for this is because there is so much area of these little teeth cutting like so. You see, boom, and it's out. And because you've tapped it, you usually find just one or two little pushes and these will just come dropping out for you like so. 
So that's the only difference between these, uh, this particular set of dies and our normal ones where we would expect things to just easily pop out for you. You will have to have a little bit of work. That's normal for the die. There's nothing wrong with it. So there's just so many intricate cuts here. It tends to just grip it a little bit more tightly. I've noticed more so with metallic, sometimes with cards, uh, things just drop out a little bit easier as well. Um, but, whoops, that's the middle part there. And there we go, you can see like that. Right, what I'm going to do now is go on and decorate the clock face with these lovely cogs. And you can see you get a lovely range and style of different sizes. Now I've cut these out in a range of different colors and I think I'd like to go for something slightly more gothic, so I, I quite favour the darker ones. I'll just bring my little box of bits over here. I'm just going to pick out a few more. So, sort of darker colours. Again, you could theme this to football teams, anything that you like. And if I just get everything out to begin with, there we go. And then I can just decide as we work along. So, it's really uh, wet glue time in a case of just decorating this up and I'm going to just simply pop a little bit of wet glue onto these and this is an acrylic glue just to make sure that it sticks nicely and firmly on to our CD there and because this isn't card it's not going to sort of it's going to take longer to dry and you're going to get a little bit of glue and bits and pieces over it but don't worry um, just just go ahead and decorate to taste really so i said i've gone for sort of browns golds and blacks here with some dark blues and purples and i'm just going to lay them up different sizes uh, the teeth actually interlock so you could if you wanted to on your first pass just have them all interlocking to begin with just pop a little bit of glue onto that there and there we go. So what I'll do now is just go on ahead and just put some basic gears down and perhaps build them up a little bit. So I should have called them cogs. <laughs> and again, I'm just playing around with colour. It's a really lovely set. This Now what I like about it um, is the fact that they're so you know, universally adaptable for cards. And we will look at some samples of cards and show you how we can use those as well. But I rather like this because with crafting, I, I do tend to do quite a few cards. We probably all do. It's the main focus of what we do. But it's nice to just do things a little bit differently once in a while. Now I've got lots of different sizes and I'm going to just um, play around with that a little bit. Let's just go and grab a smaller one here and just show you. So the first layer, I'm actually just interlocking them. There we go. What I'll probably do is come back once I've done that and um, I said just redecorate to taste. It's the quite good and fun thing about this. There's no right or wrong. What we have to be aware of is we don't want to come up too high because we will have the actual hands going round. Now I've experimented with this and we do get a, a, the greatest depth is, well the shortest depth really is the hour hand. And once we can clear that, then we're okay. And a little bit of judicial bending doesn't go uh, amiss if you need to. So I'm just gonna reach across, get some of these smaller ones here as well. And now just go on and, and have a go. Now I, as I said, I'm using acrylic glue here. It's my standard crafting glue. I can't really say long term whether it's uh, you know how sticky it really is and if it's going to do the job properly. But I, from early tests, once it sets, it does seem to be pretty good. Okay, so that's pretty much there. And now what I'm going to do is just work backwards and just overlay a few of them. So my basic part there is done. You can see I'm just making this up as I go along. It's quite good fun. Now this show is all about cogs, gears, tools. It's a little bit of a man show, this one. But of course this could be for anybody. But they do make for great cards, these. What I'm going to try and do is avoid the temptation of using uh, sticky buds or anything to hold things down. They are going to have to work in their own right. Okay. 
just pop a few more on. You get the gist of this. I'm just really going round. I can come in a little bit, just hold that in there. And there is a centre part here. And if I cut it out, which is what I'm going to do in a moment, um, I think I have a gold one, and just drop that over the centre there as well. So I'm going to go on now, put a few more of these down, just decorate it a little bit more, and then come back and we'll talk about the numbers, and then I'll just show you the, the final assembly of it. I've gone on and stuck more down, as you can see, and I think that looks rather nice. There's probably scope for a little bit more uh, to have a play around with, but I'm going to just stop at this point. You get the gist of what we're doing. Now, the next part of this is uh, putting the numbers on. And we do our All Occasion Dies number sets, and we have a large set, which I've got here, and our regular ones, as it were, that come with today, first, second, and third. These just come the big ones with the first, second, third, and fourth. Now, for this clock, I think we really need just our, our regular set here, and that's what I've used to cut out my numbers here. And what I'm gonna do is just, again, just pop these onto the clock. And if I can just show you another little technique that I use, and that's to actually pick up the more tricky objects with my craft knife. Now you've seen me do this in the past if you've seen other shows. And um, that just helps me glue it. It's now broken free. But what I'm going to do now is um, just pop that down on top there, like so. And you can, of course, use this in any colour that you want. I've just chosen silver. I was hoping that would look nice. It could possibly be done with a darker colour. I'm not sure. Whoops. The idea is that it stays on my knife, and then I can just pop it into position. So there we go. Number 12 at the top. Like so. A little bit of pressure just to keep it on there. And try and line everything up. I think I really need to just twist this around a little bit, keep it at 90 de degrees to that, and that looks fine. So I'll go on now and just do the same. I'm just, in my personal opinion, is uh, don't put all the numbers on. <laughs> um, because there's a lot of work, and you can't all, I'm not sure with the clock how accurate it will be. You've got to get everything in the right position. It gets a little bit technical, doesn't it? But just roughly uh, 12, 3, 6 and 9. Now, incidentally, with our number sets, you'll notice, I can just bring this up here, our 6 and 9 are different um, because I think they shouldn't look the same. A lot of people just give you a number 6 upside down, so that will do for the 9. As there's a definite difference, the 6 is open. And in typography terms, I think that's a much nicer way of doing it. It differentiates the numbers a little bit more and makes them look a little bit more special. So you'll see the nine there is closed, the six is open. What I'm doing is just popping my glue on there. And I'm pretty sure that you'll, <laughs> the timings will be fairly accurate now with those on there like that. Right, at this stage, I would let everything dry. Uh, still time to put a few little bit, a few bits down if you want to. You might say, well, I've got some uh, areas that are a little bit open. Well, by all means, fill them up. And there's nothing to stop you actually just spilling over from here as well. But for this instance, I'm going to stop there and just talk a wee bit about the actual hands themselves. Now, I can't say for sure which mechanism you're going to get, but by and large, you're going to get the uh, the motor, as it were, and a set of hands like this. Now, they will just slide back down over there, like so. But the first thing that's obvious is that they're just a little bit too big, aren't they? Especially my second hand. Now, I've come up with the idea that what we can do is just cut these down to size, literally. By putting some little cogs and gears onto them, we could actually... Uh, decorate them or just simply cut it down. Now I'm going to use an ordinary pair of scissors and I'm just going to say well look if I make that to about here and just cut it round like so. It's only thin metal like that. So I'll just show you I'm just cutting that like so. And that's obviously short now and that's my hour hand and I'm going to just pop that down. Now 
that just slides down on top of the first column like so the second one now is the minute hand and again that's too big so I'm going to just chop it down with a pair of scissors these particular ones are very very thin steel so they're just an ordinary pair of craft scissors and that now slots down over there like so and the second hand which you can add or leave off if you want to I rather like it that's to there so again I'm just going to mark it roughly visually and pop that there like so and that just sits there's a tiny little gear in the middle you've got to pop it onto that a little column um, again you can experiment with it and there we go that's our clock assembled and I will pop a battery in it in a moment I realize we bought it here without a battery so in a moment I'm going to dive on off and get one and um, show it to you actually working so that we can assemble it and put it together before I do that I just wanted to um, show you some other bits and pieces here so I'm just going to this is my box of bits here that uh, should be better prepped in a way and these little gears here I've probably could do with cutting some more but just to show you this is an idea I've had that we could um, just play around with these a little bit more as well so God, left or right handed today I am unsure I'm just going to spear that as it were pop a little bit of glue onto it and then just plant that onto oops I got something on my thumb there just pop that onto there like so and um, maybe as that's the hour hand make it a little bit more pronounced so a little bit more glue like so and stick that I think I'll stick that one on top there I could have perhaps tell you what I still can probably just slide that one along a bit there just just de you can see what I'm trying to do I'm just basically decorating it up and go for a different color here I'm going for my purple whoops now I find just using my craft knife I've mentioned this before I kind of stab my die with it my die cut but it um it doesn't really leave a mark or show but I find it very useful for positioning and working with like this okay put a little bit of pressure on there and I said I think you can get the gist of this I can build my way up one more on here now this is ever is just my serving suggestion you can put whatever you like on it you could be I said football team colors um, anything that you like just whoops these little ones being a bit fiddly I'll tell you what it is I'm going to pop my glasses on bear with me two seconds ah you know, everything instantly looks bigger I can see where I am okay my glue isn't coming out another handy hint for you because this is going to happen to you I know this is TV we could edit this out but I want to show you I've got an old paper clip here and what I simply do is just pop it back in if I can see what I'm doing like so there we go that just clears it out a little bit and I've got my glue flowing out again so they're quite useful to have around I find when I'm crafting I suppose really I should be popping that down every time but because we're filming and I'm trying to do things quickly I don't always get the cap on but uh, something like that's pretty useful there we go <laughs> I really like that um, there's something about clocks which are universally appealing aren't there so I think that's done I might come back and fiddle with it a little bit more put some more gears in I've got uh, or cogs I should call them that's our cog set remember um, but moment of truth uh, we'll go and get a battery fire this one up and show you it working so here's the finished clock and everything's in position now and I can show you it actually working and going round now I think um, everything's gone really according to plan I could go on and decorate a little bit more what I would suggest is you let everything dry because you're not gluing onto card it's taking longer for the for the glue to dry um, but once that's down you should be able to just sort of make sure the mechanism's okay and if I just tilt this sideways you can see how the, the hands actually sit within the column there and um, 
there's plenty of gap between the base and here, so I could come up a little bit higher if I wanted to. And I found that I'd bent the, ar the arms of the clock here by, or the hands rather, by cutting them. So I've had to just bend and straighten everything out, but hey, it's, it's ticking over. And according to this, I would say that's nearly eight o'clock. So I think possibly the timing still intact as well. I'm not quite sure. Uh, they might come with instructions. I've just I said assembled this and put it roughly into position. So um, I think basically if you set it for 12 o'clock with the hands after that, everything will go round and then you can use the back to change the time. But that really is another story. What we're looking at is the crafting side here. The last but not least, um, Mick, a friend of mine, Mick, made this for me as a present. And he's also made a box for it. This is his version here. And that's something you could do, again, as a sort of a presentation technique if you wanted to. Uh, but that really, again, is another crafting story for you. The main focus of this and I don't want to get over uh, wrapped up in the clock, is actually the gears themselves. The gear sets are brilliant. Uh, if you're making cards for men, you're looking for something, or making crafting objects for men, I don't think you can go far wrong with these. What I love about this set is the fact that you get five of them in it, and there's different sizes. Now, they interlock, and you'll notice a little hole in there. You can actually, as it cuts out, you can put a brad in it and make everything move if you want to as well. They're a good size and the teeth do actually lock in as you've seen as I've done here as well. So it's a fantastic cure-all for men's cards. And uh, this was one I just wanted to show you that, we've, that I've done uh, in a more crafting environment outside of making a card. But if you watch the gallery at the end, you'll see uh, other versions and ideas for making cards with them. So that's my first one. Um, so the next thing to do is let's have a look at, we've looked at cogs uh, for men. I'd like to show you now the next thing is some tools. We're going to do man, men's tools now and make a traditional card with that. For this next card, I want to do what I call a traditional man's card. Now again, we're not excluding the ladies here. This is uh, really sort of nailing our colours to the mast and saying a fantastic toolbox for you to have a go at. And I'm using our All Occasion Dies, our tool set here to create this card. And this is a card that was made for me, one of my lovely uh, card makers, Dawn. And what we've got for you is a free download. Now you can download the toolbox and I've got a backing paper and some other ones. So I'm using this as my inspiration, but I'm gonna make one slightly different from this. And so, popping that to one side, let me show you, first of all, you will find on our website, under free downloads, I've put together something called DIY. And I've got you some lovely paper here, which is looks like wood. I'm going to mat and layer that later on and pop that on, which is our sort of tools hardboard, and then pop on some other tools. There's different woods on there, different colors, and you also get to download for free a whole range of toolboxes here as well. And I'm going to be using the largest one here and just showing you a little technique where we're going to uh, mat and layer that onto our backing paper. And if I just show you this one here, I don't know if it'll pick up on the camera, but put some uh, foam pads on there, raise it up, and a little bit of a cut in the pocket and just have the tools peeking out as well. And then putting them on here as well. So, okay, the pattern for that is on a free download as well, wouldn't you know? I'm being very generous with this one. It's all gonna be under DIY for you. Now we've got our CD-ROM called Fabulous Folds, and I've got loads of these ones on here as well. But this one we've just popped together. This is to Dawn's recipe, as I call it. And all the lines will be on here. Red are cut. We've got blue, they point upwards to the sky. Green is valley, they go down with the folds. Basically, you're going to have to score it, and I'm going to show you that now. So don't worry too much, but uh, and as you fold it in and pull it all together, you'll make, I think they call them stepper cards, like so there with the steps. Okay, so let me just do a little bit of housework here. I'm just going to move all of this to one side, and we'll come back for that in a moment. And I'm going to be using our tools and some birthday greetings and bits and pieces. That's in my little pack there. But let me show you how we do this. Now red lines are cut lines and with a craft knife and you will probably find it easier with a craft knife rather than scissors. You just need to cut down and create your cut lines here on the red ones. There's two of those 
They go from the top to the bottom. The rest of them are just score. Now I've pre-scored this, so I'm going to just show you. Basically, I'm using the back of my blade here. I can't stress that enough. That gives me a very tight and neat cut, which I find quite useful for this. You can use a scoring tool as well if you want to. Go, if you've got one like this, a double-ended one, try for the smaller ball on it if you can to give you a really nice crease. The more accurate the creasing, the more accurate the card will be. You can use your scoreboards uh, if you want to, but I find that they're brilliant. But in this instance, with the paper engineering, I find a really tight, particularly tight fold is quite useful. Now that has gone through my printer twice. So I've printed this on one side, and to make it go to edge to edge, I went uh, borderless. But when you come to print the inst instructions out on the back, if you want to use these, you must make sure that it's all set to just printing normal size. Don't do any enlargements or reductions or anything, or else all these measurements will not work. You can use anything you like. This is just my serving suggestion. Now, putting these together can be a little bit tricky. What I do is just, I'm prepared to fold it the wrong way, then the right way or whatever. What you need to do is get a crease in here, right the way across. This is our halfway point. So I'll just show you here. I just gently tease that over like so until I can see the line appearing on the paper there. And take your time with this. Don't, don't worry too much. And then I'll put a nice crease in there. Everything else is bending. That's absolutely fine. Because that now, because it's a blue line, it's going to come this way. So a bit of a squeeze on there and a bit of a squeeze on there. You can see it taking shape. So as I fold this like so, that begins to fold there. My green ones just come down. In fact, at this point, colors almost become arbitrary. I just sort of fold it and keep it, keep it coming as it were like that. Now, just to help it on its way before you, it doesn't do any harm just to pre-fold it. Again, just pop that on there. This is where good score lines are important. And again, that's a little one there. What we don't have, you can see that's, that's just about ready to fold. Before I do that, I just want to make a point before I forget. We don't want to, when you're scoring, don't go all the way across here and all across there. Otherwise that weakens the whole card. We're getting to the point that I think we're just about there. It's all gonna come into position like so. Fold that down. And there we have it. Now, I'm trying to talk to you, keep my head out of the camera, and do 101 things. So I hope I haven't made that look too awkward, but you've got plenty of time to do it. If things aren't right, then don't worry. Just, you can reverse it, you can bend it all one way, bend it back the next, whatever's the easiest way to work for you. But in this instance, that's what I've done. Just using my bone folder there, just to get a tighter crease, because it's a bit concertina -y for me. And that's our basic card, like so. Okay, I'm gonna unwrap it for the moment because I just find that's a little bit easier for me. Now, I'm just gonna reach out of the camera there and bring in my next piece. Basically, the card's gonna have a panel on the front here. So what I've got is, again, it's part of the free downloads and I'm gonna use my trusty tape pen here rather than my wet glue. I just think for bigger areas, it tends I think not to um, cockle the paper. And talking of papers and stock, what I've used for the background is a 250 GSM card. I think you need to, if you're doing anything with paper, treat yourself to something of a reasonable thickness. And I must admit, I've done this on 250. It was in the printer. I printed everything on 250. Okay, so that's my my image down or my ground down there and see I can just work it up eventually the whole card will come together but that that's fine for the moment so the next thing to do is to get the other bits and pieces out here and I've got my toolbox again that's on the sheet for you the free downloads on the on the website if you have a little look on there what I need to do is just cut a line in here to just popping my glasses on there so I don't lose any fingers. I'm just going to cut a line along the top part here. 
Now I'm going to just leave about four mil from either end. I don't want to cut the whole thing off and I don't want it to lose its strength. So just leave a little bit either side, but cut along the top lip there like so. And that'll give us a little bit of wiggle room on that as well. Flip it over and we're going to put our foam pads onto that. And I've actually got some new ones because in the past, I've been whinging, and it is whinging, about how they weren't very good because they'd got a bit dried out. God, you'd think I'd learn how to use these by now, wouldn't you? These are my one mil ones, and they're sticking to me better than they're sticking to the card at the moment. So I'm just going to, if I'll just show you here, this is my method, flick that bit off there, pop that onto there, hold it down, give it a squeeze. and pop that like so. Now we're going to have the tools dropping in, so try and keep these uh, towards the edges. I'll just go on now and just gives you an idea of what I'm doing. Just pop one there, whoops, and another one here. And then do the same for the lid as well, just to uh, really hold it into position more than anything else. You could almost use your uh, glue uh, tape pen on that to hold it flat. So I'll go on now. What I'm going to do is just flick all of these off, press them down, flick them off, and come back and stick it onto the card. So with my one mil foam pads in position, I've got my cut there, and just pop this down. And I think I'll just cover up the first. I can use those holes there just as a guide, and I'll just cover those up and just place it down like so. Now I find it easier to do it on the card like this. It'll all come into shape a little bit later on. And then with my craft knife, oh look, you can see my uh, offerings there. I'll be able to just pull this back, make sure there's a gap there and I can feed the tools through. So the tools, let's have a little look at those. I love the tool die. Here it is here, lovely little tool set. We've got some nails, hammer, bits and pieces on there. And they just cut in your normal way. I'm gonna pop that down onto my machine. Uh, as ever, just try and get everything flowing in the vertical lines. When I design it, I try and allow for the fact that it's gonna go through happier that way through your machine rather than that way. So again, just pop that into position here and plate on and run it through. Now I'm using silver mirror board first of all, and I want to chat to you about how we can take this to another level. Just pop that up there. See that they're dropping out. They've just come out already just move that out of the way take the die out there and again a little tap should see um, i'm trying to be careful because i don't want the little parts like the nails here to just disappear too soon so again a little tap and they'll all come dropping out the saw will if i pop it onto a piece of uh, let me just show you here actually it, when you're tapping a die it's much better to tap onto something hard. Your mat's really too soft, and I'll see, you'll see now, if I go like this, that'll just drop out. You see that? Because what it is, it's just a bit of physics, really. It just shock waves it back out. If it's on the soft, it can be a little bit tough. So I always use my cutting plate, give it a whack. Don't be afraid, they're not gonna break. They're not gonna break, they're tough old tools. Okay, now, oh, it's just so much to tell you, <laughs> right. Um, Th these you can see now the tools in silver looking lovely we've got the lovely embossing lines everything on there as well they also create a lovely negative shape here and i just want to get a card to show you for one second uh, what we can do with that as well what i love about this is how we can use the reverse shape or the negative shape as you can see here again that's just done on a, a contrasting color card and this case black and white and the shapes themselves are really quite interesting and lovely so that's another suggestion for you and lots of our dies work like that as well so that was just to uh, give you a little heads up on that okay so I've got my tools here um, I think everything's pretty well accounted for uh, along the way I think I've dropped my screwdriver anyway not to worry now these look lovely like this you can cut them out and use them as they are but what I'd like to do is just show you some I have prepared earlier on and the ones I'd like to use in the card so if I just pop those to there like so 
Okay, just bear with me a second. I'm going to empty this lot out. Right back here. And uh, just flip them over. Use my craft knife to help me there. And you can see what I've done is basically I've run my silver through first of all and then run through with a second colour just to add that to say the hammer, the pliers and the screwdriver there and a little bit of wood on the saw handle. So that just makes them I think look even more realistic. Uh, that, you don't have to necessarily go that far but it does look really nice and they are very very simple to make and do that way. So if I can just show you um, one of them I'll just, just do a couple and just show you how I would tackle that. I've cut this out in silver, I've chosen my second colour, in this instance red, and what I simply do is that you'll see there's a natural line, just use your craft knife and chop that like so. And then we can glue, pop that out there, pop a little bit of glue in this instance on here, like that, a little bit there. Then again with my craft knife, this is just my preferred method, you could do anything that you like. Just line that back up, hold it for a second and just pop it onto the original shape. Whichever colour you've chosen to use, that will be fine. I'll just take the excess glue off when it's dry because it's sticking onto a mirror board. It does, a bit like the cogs we used on the clock, it takes a little bit longer. So. Just to show you that point again, we've got the hammer here, looks lovely in silver, fabulous in red, but all I'm going to do is look for a natural break, which is this point here, and cut that off with my craft knife, and again, a little bit of glue onto there, and with my craft knife, pair of tweezers, whatever you're comfortable with, that will be a perfect fit over it and just pop that on there like so. And then go on and do that for the rest of the tools. The things I wouldn't do is something like the spanner, which is silver, um, really just the screwdriver, if I bring that into shot, and a little bit of brown on the handle for the saw like so, but wow, <laughs> they do look fantastic. They, they really do look lovely, just like that. There's a real sense of realness to them. Okay, so I'll go on, make a few more, and we'll come back to the card now, and I'll show you how I apply them to the card. So with all my tools made up, I'm ready to pop them in. And it's really just a case of gluing the back and then slotting it in. So I'm gonna put a few dots of glue on there, like so. Hold that in my hand, and then come back to here, and just using my craft knife, I'm just going to slot that in behind there and just put my saw at a jaunty angle like so and just glue that down like that and then go on and do the others as well so same technique a little bit of glue on them a few dots of glue hold it into position slide that open with my finger there Whoops, just pick that up and slot that in. And again, I'm just placing things at an angle just to make it a little bit more exciting and interesting. You don't have to be uh, too fussy about how they look, but we're just going for... And again, sometimes that flap, because it is just a cut, just I have to just slip the knife in there, as it were. Then I can hold it with my finger and then I can place this. I'm gonna go for the bigger part of the spanner there and just slide that in. It's an angle like that. And you can get the gist of what we're doing here. It's nice and straightforward. You can make it up. Uh, you could put extra ones in there if you wanted to. But in essence, we're just gonna slide that in and get my hand into that there. It's just a design thing. It's just nice to change the angle like that rather than having them all uh, upright. And last but not least, especially on something like this with the pliers, again, a little bit of glue onto that. Flip that over. Whoops. Just scrape that glue off there. And I'm going to just pop these 
hanging over the toolbox like so. So that just again just breaks everything up and gives you another little bit of uh, gluey fingers there making it worse. Incidentally, I've used photo paper here to make the toolbox look a bit glossy. If you do get a little bit of glue on it, just let it dry. The temptation is to try and rub it off now. Um, let it dry, because it, it will be better, unless it will disturb the surface too much. Although it's a toolbox, hey, it's going to be a bit wee bit messy. So those are my tools in position there. Now the rest of the card is going to look like this this let me get that right <laughs> when it's made up so those two panels here at the back are the next ones to do you can just sort of see the shadow there and again while i've got everything together i'll just pop a few uh, tools together so let me just show you here a little bit of glue onto my hammer and i'm just going to pop that at a jaunty angle on that back panel there and then the screwdriver the opposite angle there like so and you just go on and decorate the faces we've got the two at the front here and there'll be the other two panels there I could pop something on there so I'll just go on now and finish the card off and uh, the last job to do then will just be to put the happy birthday message greeting in here I've gone on and I've stuck the rest of the tools down along the sides and what I'm left with now is just my greetings message and I've gone for a good old happy birthday in silver so I've just stuck a little bit of glue a few dots along the base there and that can just sit now in nice shiny silver it's a definite sort of silvery look to all of this again just hold everything down let it dry if you've got any little bits spilling out rub it all off afterwards if you want to and there we go that's the card pretty well made up now all i've got to do is just the final assembly so it'd be a case of just pulling it all together and that's our final card we've got our birthday message on there we've got this lovely toolbox fantastic tools on this lovely stepper card so that's going to sit beautifully on the mantelpiece and it is a, it's a card for men now anyone who knows me especially my family i probably have more tool boxes than my wife has shoes and that's saying something i have tools everywhere tinkering with motorbikes cars etc so for me um it's, it's a natural this card but it is a great one for the men and for the girls if they're budding mechanics why not do that for them as well so uh we've covered lots on this one i think making up the tools you can see that you can get an even more realistic effect uh, the stepper card looks lovely and the whole thing just looks really really nice so really with just this simple die set the tool set that we've got here we can make cards like this which i think are lovely uh, one mil foam pads again just keep everything nice and low just give us that little bit of dimension in 3d now you could have gone further and even mounted the tools up and that would have looked lovely little bits of foam pad cut out and stuck down it's probably one of those things that after I make a card I look and thinking oh I could have done this I could have done that but as it stands I'm really happy with this and remember the uh, lovely card that we've got here this is all on the website for you to download including that part and the toolbox as well they're all free downloads on our paper crafts website so there's uh, lots for you to get your teeth into that set's called DIY look out for that uh, on the website I'd just like to finish off on this demonstration here, a really quick card. <laughs> it is for me, won't be quite so quick for you. And we're using the Mini here and our London scene. Now the London scene and all the other bits and pieces are, as you may have guessed, a free download on our website. Uh, the Mini is, uh, again, one of our dies there and full instructions on how to make it are on the website. But what I would like to do is just quickly finish off on the, on the little card like this. So what I've got is basically a mat and layering exercise, 250 GSM base, and a nice piece of shiny black card here to use as my initial background. And that's going to just come along and sit like so. So just line that up a little bit more towards the top than the bottom and rest that over. So that's my first layer down and there's oh, many different ways of making this card 
but what I've got here are my London scenes. So I've used some red paper here. This is probably about a 100 GSM, 80, 90 to 100 GSM, and just taking the images off. Now, if memory serves me right, you can get these in a lighter version as well. So you may want to not just have it quite so bright and colorful, but I'm, I'm going for this. There's a definite red theme to this, and that's why it's all nice and bright, but I'm pretty sure I've done these as uh, sort of muted images as well for you. So the choice is yours. Again, some simple matte and layering going on here. Again, uh, it's very iconic, this. <laughs> we've got the bus. We've got the, the phone box as well. And that goes on there like that. So simple matte and layering. And last one at least, a bit of glue on here. Now, I don't think a little bit of foam pad would have gone amiss, but that, that's up to you. We're going to use the foam pads on the mini as well. So just popping this towards the corner there, tiny little bit of black showing. I'm not going to come out over the edge. Rest that like so. I'm working at what I call jaunty angles here. Now I shouldn't, I don't recommend you do this over your lovely card like I'm doing, just keeping this into camera for you. Bit of glue around the edges. And again, I want to put the word uh, happy up in here. So I'm making a natural sort of line for it there and just coming down a few little design decisions on the fly. And there we go. That's the, that's the basics down now. Wow, it, it makes a nice card as it is. Now the star of the show here is my Mini, which has just got caught up on my birthday. Now I'm not going to, uh, to go through the making of this with you because it's all on the website and it will take a, a wee bit of time to do. Now what I've done, and I recommend it on there, is I've just used tape to build this up. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It's clear, it's supposed to be clear and visible tape. And you basically hold the roof, the sides, the wheels in and the inside, and then turn it over and I've just glued all of these bits and pieces on. And I've got a few more to finish off, but basically that, that's how it all works. And then the beauty of this is you can then reposition it however you want. And that's why I, I really favor with this. So just to, to move on, what I've got to do now is just absolutely raise this up on some foam pads. Now up to now I've used one mil. I'm gonna go a little bit higher and just give ourselves a little bit of depth on here. So I'll just flip this over and go ahead now and just pop some foam pads onto that. Now I've got some big, Oh look, RA, my initials. <laughs> Some big, bigger foam pads here. So I'm, I'm going for a little bit of distance to get this off the ground as it were. So I'll just pop those onto there like so. That will all help hold those objects as well. And just quickly pull that off like so. And you could put some other bits and pieces on there. It, it's, it's not too delicate. Maybe I'd, I'd put another little quarter one on there just to hold that bit of the roof. And I'll just quickly show you that technique. I'll just simply cut, actually take that bit off there and just cut little slices off like so. What we don't want to do is have that showing. Whoops, yeah, let's just position that like that. It'll just help support that roof and actually stick everything on. Okay, I'll just pop this one onto the card. Now carefully hover into position where you want this to go, because once those foam pads touch, they're there for good. So I think about there and just pop my card down. Look at that lovely depth. It's a, I don't know if that's capturing on the, on the screen, but it's a really lovely 3D look to it. So last but not least, all I need to do now is just stick on my happy there, get rid of, get rid of that in a moment. Happy, I'm gonna have birthday there and sun there. So I'm just gonna go on and glue that now. We'll come back and I've just got some finishing touches and a few little words of advice to give you. Just gone on and glued the words. So I'm gonna put uh, happy up here. Well, I could have happy there. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna just change my mind. I'm gonna have happy here. I think running at a nice jaunty angle along there. So happy birthday down here. Just pop that there. Now I would recommend that you just pre-align everything just to make sure you've got room. You don't want to suddenly come to here and find that you're sticking over onto the wheels or whatever. So I'll just put happy birthday, son. 
there and uh, that's everything into position on the card now I'm just I'm thinking ahead I'm looking for some tiny cogs here and just wondering you know because I've got that space there I might, I might just pop a few little bits and pieces up there but before I get carried away with that I'd like to show you just a few little techniques I've got one or two little details to finish off on the car here and I want to just show you a technique now for working with the more fiddly bits when it comes to doing uh, work with the dies like this I've done a complete tutorial on how to make the mini up but the little technique I've discovered uh, whilst doing some of the other things is just taking a part like this and then using the glue on there and just using my my blade here to help me position and line things up just works really well I just pop that on the front of the car there so any smaller details I find it easier to capture it onto my craft knife pop a bit of glue onto it like so and then just move that onto my paper like there and I can just manipulate it and that just helps with the smaller items just to build them all up so again a tiny one like the door handle here pick it up pop it on the craft knife get a bit of glue onto that and then just stick it down into position like that and I can just go on and do all the other little fiddly bits like the hinges etc same technique just makes life a lot easier just pop one there come back later to to take off any excess glue and there we go uh, that's our card nearly finished a few little bits I might just fiddle around with it and there we go a fabulous card I think so here is the finished card I've gone on put the greetings on Put a few more details back into the mini and just summing up free downloads for the london scene at the back and there's other ones on there full instructions on our website for making the mini and a lot more detail i've used our standard happy and birthday here and i've also put the word son in and that's from our granddaughter son mother father etc set of words and that's worth having a look at on the website as well so we've got a whole range of relatives on there for you as well okay and and there we have it i think final thing just to mention is that i normally work with one mil foam pads and i've used a four mil ones here but it's <laughs> i don't know if it's showing up on the camera this really does make this mini look 3d i mean it's a lovely looking car as it is and if i just tilt the car you can card to see the car and probably just about make it out under there so a little bit more depth in this instance has really given this a bit of zing so a fantastic card um you can change the color of the mini you can make it for your daughter and she might like a red one as well or a pink blue yellow whatever you like well i hope you've enjoyed these uh, demonstrations as ever i've run out of time i've got more to show you i'm going to roll that onto another program uh, it was definitely a man's theme uh, today which i hope you've enjoyed and i've just touched the surface so we've looked at sort of crafting a little bit out of our remit of cards looking at the clock uh, through to our lovely stepper cards and just using our cogs we've used our tool set and i've just shown you the mini here now we have other vehicles in the range we've got a lovely camper van and a fantastic motorbike as well again you can see everything on the website and all instructions for those are on there as well and on this particular one a final reminder that lots of free downloads which i've done which tie in with the cards that we've got here as well so that again all on the website for you anyway take care and enjoy your crafting i'll be back soon bye bye with this one i've used the tools and uh, we spoke about this on the demonstrations just showing you how you can use it as a reverse it's a very nice technique and this is again just black paper on top of white and the tools separated because they will come apart in the dies and just placed onto the card and then used as a relief pattern here but the shapes are very very visual and i think that works quite well again you could put any greeting on there that you wanted it's a nice little technique this one to to have a play around with once you've made up your basic mini you're able to use it any way that you want really and here's a nice little idea just using a, a bit of old road map uh, as the background here 
popping the mini on top and then putting your greetings on as well. So it's just another really sort of serving suggestion for you. We've got a lot more cards on the gallery on the website. I'm just going through a few examples here uh, just to show you some of the variations and give you some ideas. But do check out the gallery on our website for even more cards to look at. And this card just shows you, again, the versatility of the gears. And I mentioned the fact that we could use brads to hold them in the middle, as you can see I've got here. And the advantage of that is, A, it's a little bit more decorative, but B, as I said, if you build them up in a couple of layers, you can actually make the wheels, the cogs move. So that's something which is quite nice and fun um, and adds to all sorts of uh, possibilities, really, for the card making. Another free card to download, the Father's Day card, um, but it could be Happy Birthday, Happy Birthday Dad. So it's not just for Father's Day, but that again on the website, free downloads, but you will need to look for the Father's Day version to find it. But just coming back and looking at the cogs here, they work really well. And again, if you'd put a brad in, you could have probably made the whole lot move. In fact, look at that. I haven't, I haven't used this one in a while, but... Um, if you build them up, and by the way, if you do want to do that, it's best to perhaps put two or three together and stick them on. That gives them a little bit more depth. I haven't quite got that on this one, but uh, you can see that they'll work if, if I was uh, a little bit more patient with it, possibly. I mean, that's just a, an aside. The, the cogs themselves actually look really nice. Remember, using the metallic uh, papers, the, like the golds and silvers, browns, I think make it look a little bit more metally as well. But some of the more muted colours work equally as well. If I just come back to the clock here, I can show you some of my purples and even the blacks were uh, less shiny papers than the metallics and uh, mirror boards, but worked equally as well.